Our goal in this video will be to develop different methods for determining the area between this curve here and this x-axis. This area is called the integral of f from a to b and we don't necessarily want to find a method that will give us an exact answer what we want to do is find a method given just a few points along this curve that will give us an answer that is very close to the exact answer and what we want to do is take a look at some of these well-known methods of doing just that and finding ways to make these rules make sense. For example, the left rule, you multiply b min minus a and multiply that times f of a. The trapezoid rule, you multiply b minus a times f of a plus f of b divided by 2. In Simpson's second rule, for example, you multiply b minus a divided by 8 times f of a plus 3f of 2a plus b divided by 3 plus 3 times f of a plus 2b divided by 3 plus f of b. Now, that might seem rather random, but I want to show that all of these methods here are just different versions of the same method. So let's get started. I have this curve here and I want to know the area. And I have a friend who knows a little more than I do. He knows one value of this function called f. Let's say that he knows this value here, f of a. Okay? So that's the only thing I know. And out of this one value, I want to make an approximation of this area. So what I could do is make a rectangle here and then just figure out the area of that rectangle. So of course the width of this rectangle is just b minus a and the height of the rectangle is just this value here f of a. And we We'll call that the left rule, and we'll signify that with an L. And we see that this is, of course, not perfect, because we're counting a little bit of the integral that's not actual, uh, not actually there, and we're leaving a whole bunch out that is actually there. But that is a first attempt. So let's try again. Uh, there, again, we had one point. Right, we only knew one point, f of a. And now, again, we want to only know one point. One point is all we know. So let's say we know f of b. My friend whispers f of b into my ear, and that's all she wrote. I don't know any more than that. So, again... I could make a rectangle and just deal with this area. Of course, this is going to be a terrible approximation because I'm not counting any of this here, but it's a first start. So that would be b minus a times the height, which would be f of b. And we will call that the right rule. Not right is incorrect, but right is in not left. And we see it really is not correct. So, we could do something else with one point. We could maybe also have this point in the middle. Right? That's just the point right between a and b, which is of course a plus b divided by 2. Let's say we knew that value on the curve. 
that's f of a plus b divided by 2. And now we have this rectangle, which we can calculate as having this area, b minus a times f of a plus b divided by 2. Right? And we will call that m for the midpoint rule because we're dealing with the middle point. Again, we had only one point that we knew. So we don't need to worry that this approximation is not so perfect. We only had one point. Maybe our approximations will get better when we use more than one point. So let's say now that we actually know two points. So my friend whispers two of these points into my ear. And these two points are f of a and f of b. Now, I want to use these two points to make some sort of shape that somewhat resembles this curve, and then I will take the area of that shape. So I could just simply connect these two points, and then I have a trapezoid. And the area of a trapezoid is the width times the average height. The average height is just f of a plus f of b divided by 2. Alternatively, I could write that like this. And I just have a 1 half here in the middle. Right? And we see that that's what we saw at the very beginning. It's being called the trapezoid rule. That's this one right here. At first, I wrote it in this way, and then I changed it and wrote it in a way that looks more similar to this next one. What I'm trying to do here is find things that all of these rules have in common and make them look the same. For example, I'm going to want to start all of them with b minus a, and I'm going to want to get rid of this divided by 8 thing here. That makes them look different, actually they're mostly the same. So let's return to our example. We will call this one the trapezoid rule and signify it with a T. We used two points. So now we could use three points. Now is when it gets interesting. Let's say we have three points that are known to us. And again, our friend tells us these points yells these points to us from afar or whispers, whispers to them whispers them to us in our ear however he tells them to us we know that they are f of a and f of a plus b divided by 2 that's just this middle point here a plus b divided by 2 and this is of course f of b so now the question is what do we want to do with these three points? Probably the first thing that would occur, to me at least, would be simply to add up these three points I'm just writing the three points down that we have, or the three values and then we could just divide them by 3. So basically I'm just averaging those three points. So wherever that average would be, maybe that average would be somewhere around here. Right? And I'll make a rectangle. And I'm making this rectangle and then calculating the average of it, right? So that would be one thing that might present itself as an idea. Another thing we could do is we could take a weighted average. We could say that since we think that, for this curve anyway, this first point seems to be more in line with what the rest of it is, 
we could maybe count that one twice. Mm, that's not what I wanted. We could count that one twice and then divide the whole thing by 4, right? Then our average will be a little bit closer to f of a than it will be to the other ones. Or, if we wanted to just be different for the sake of being different, we could add 2 there and divide that by 4. Or if we wanted to, of course, we could add three of these and or how about we do this? We say we want one of these, two of these, and three of these, and then we divide it by six, right? So we could weight these three different points in different ways. Now, what we're trying to figure out and to derive is Simpson's rule. So let's see what Simpson did. We'll go back to the top. What Simpson did is he weighted this middle term with a 4. So let's do that. So we will take away these crazy numbers and we will weight that with a 4. And then of course we have six function values all together, so I could divide that by six, but as I said, I want to make all of these look the same, so I'm going to write one-sixth here. So we notice that what Simpson did was give more weight to the middle. Now Simpson also has a second rule. Let's see what he did there. Now we're going to know f three points. No, I'm sorry, we we're going to know really four points, which means we are going to divide our interval up into three parts. Right? So we have from A to here, and from here to here, and from here to B. So there are three parts. Uh, you can write this here as 2A plus B divided by 3. You can work that out and that's the way it works out. And this is a plus 2b divided by 3. So this is just one-third of the way to b and two-thirds of the way to b. And our friend again tells us in quite a clear voice that these are indeed the only points that he's going to tell us. So this is f of a. This is f of 2a plus b divided by 3 and this is f of a plus 2b divided by 3 and this is f of b. So what Simpson does here is he multiplies b minus a then he writes in his four points as we saw before, and then he's going to give each one of these a specific weight. Now what do you think he's going to do with these function values? Which ones are going to become or going to become the most important ones? Which ones are going to get the most weight? You guessed it. He's making the middle ones more important. That's the same pattern that we saw in the one before. Now exactly why he chose a 3, we haven't derived. Maybe we think it should be an 8 here, right? Who knows, maybe it should be a an 88. But what Mr. Simpson did was chose a 3. And since we've used all together eight function values, then we multiply that by one-eighth, so that's just an average, a weighted average, and we have Simpson's second rule, which we'll call S2, S sub 2, and this other one we wanted to call S. And I think we gave the other ones its name. No, this one actually was called the trapezoid rule, right? So we called that one T. Oh, I had already.
already done that. Here we go. So now we named it twice. Right. So now we've all we've got names for all of our functions. And if we take another look at S2, sometimes you'll see this one called the three eighths rule instead of Simpson's second rule. And the reason is because of this eight, and then not because of these threes, but because we've divided this up into three parts then we've got the three-eighths rule, another rule, another name for that rule. So let's take a look now, another look, at these interval approximations that we've derived. And I've written them here in a somewhat better form so that we see they all begin in the same way, b minus a. It's basically just the width of the area that we're wanting to calculate. And then we have weighted averages here. Here we've get given more weight to the middle and in this case they are in the trapezoid rule for example they're both given the same weight, right? f of a and f of b are given the same weight. Now take a look at these here. You can also look at these first three as weighted averages. So instead of f of a I could also write f of a plus 0 f of a plus b divided by 2 and plus 0 of f of b. And then I could just multiply that by 1 over 1 because I've, altogether I've only used 1, right? So it's also a weighted average where I've just used 0 of these other values. So in all cases we have this pattern here that you can see below. In order to approximate the integral we just take the length of the interval which is b minus a here and we multiply that by the weighted average of the function values. And the only thing you have to remember is how exactly they're weighted. Now the left rule is very clear. You just take the left point. This one for the right rule you just take the right point for the midpoint rule obviously you just take the middle point right so the first three you've already got memorized now the trapezoid rule is also very clear you just take uh... this is a mistake this should be a half here it's a mistake you just take the left and the right point and average them so there's nothing really to memorize there. And Simpson's rule, you just have to remember that there's a 4 in the middle. And with Simpson's second rule, you just have to remember these two 3s. So now let's take, actually let's go way back up to the top and see if there was also a mistake there. No, there was no mistake there. So that was so far so good, right? Just remember that this is indeed a 2 here and not a 6. So now let's look at an example. We want to calculate the integral of e to the x from 0 to 1. Now I've already written this out here and we'll just look at it very quickly. So we'll take this integral and it turns out to be e to the first minus e to the zeroth, which is 1.7183. Okay, so this is the actual value that we actually know. Okay? That is the right answer. Now we're going to use our methods of approximating things to determine how good these approximations are. So if we use the left rule, then b minus a is 1 minus 0, right? This is our b and this is our, our a. 1 minus 0 times e to the zeroth, because that's a, and we end up since e to the zeroth is 1, we end up with a 1, right? And so that's not such a great approximation. Now if we use the right-hand rule, we end up with e to the first, which is 2.7183. Mm, also not so good. And if we use the middle, then we end up with e to the one-half power. And now we're getting closer, we're getting warmer, right? 1.6487 and 1.7183, that's not too bad. If we use the trapezoid rule, 
you see I've done all the, the working out here of the actual numbers. We come up with this number, 1.8592, which is also not bad. Now is when it gets interesting. Let's look at Simpson's rule. Simpson's rule, of course we have this weighted average, we're dividing by 6, it looks a little complicated, but look at that average there. Or not the average, but the, uh, the area of our approximation. 1.7189, and here we had 1.7183, so within 6 one thousandths. And now look at Simpson's second rule, and we have 1.7186 within three thousandths of the correct answer. Three ten thousandths, isn't it? That's ten thousandths. Three ten thousandths, imagine that. And all we knew were four points, right? So this is a very good approximation, and this is also a very good approximation. And I think it's clear now that these formulas all make sense, right? We divide by 8 here because we have 8 function values. We divide by 6 here because we have 6 function values. And here we divide by 2, not 6, because we have 2 function values. So I hope I have been able to convince you that these indeed are just different versions of the same idea.